What's up guys, welcome back to the garage. Today we're gonna to get started on the rebuild of my engine. I'm taking the stock two liter in my Bumblebee up to 2056, so it'll have a little extra bump. Now if you've watched other episodes, you've seen that I've taken the engine case down, and now I've gotta pack it up and send it off to Len Hoffman at Ham so he can verify that this case is actually good for rebuild. Now I checked with Len and he told me how to box it all up. Basically lots of foam in a box that's really sturdy. Three weeks later. Well, the case is finally back from its cross-country trip. It went from here down to Georgia, where Len Hoffman decked the case. And then Len noticed that it needed an align bore, so he sent it to European Motor Works in LA, and George took care of that, and then sent the engine back here. So this engine case has traveled probably more than the car ever will. And here it is. Okay, it's the ultimate unboxing video here. <laughs> Let's see what this thing looks like. It's kind of like a, <laughs> like Russian dolls here. Box within a box, within a box. A lot of the foam that I originally packed it with is still in the case. And now we can start to see what we got here. Wow, it's looking super clean. And it's nice to see that this didn't bend. All right, we got some studs here. Well, it looks really nice and clean. Let's see if we can uh, get this on the stand. And here's the oak I'm talking about. Uh, it's designed for a uh, Type 4 engine, probably other Volkswagen engines too, but gives you a lot of, uh, a lot of space. You can work in and around, even do a clutch job with this kind of yoke. Well, now I see what these uh, what these studs are for here. Um, the studs are out of the case because I guess when uh, George needed to work on them, he uh, he had to take the studs out. So I will put them back in first because I'm going to need those to attach the yoke. Okay, now I just double nutted this, and um, I'm just gonna put the stud back into the case while well, it's on the ground here. One-handed, of course. All right. Got the yoke on. Now you'll see that I put the yoke on the right side of the engine. I had to think about it for a second. The side that has the distributor on it because as we work on it, I'm gonna want that side to be the side that I'm working on and then put this side of the case on top to sandwich it all closed. So let's take a quick look at what we got going on here. This is where the case was decked. Really just kind of flattened this out because these registers were a little out of square um, and not completely parallel to the path of the crankshaft, which is really what we need. So Len Hoffman, uh, has a special rig and has done a lot of these Type 4 engines and got the case decked perfectly. I believe you told me he took uh, 12 thousandths off of this to get it all square. And this side's decked as well. You can't really see it obviously just in video. It's 12 thousandths of an inch, but it's definitely done. You can tell that the metal is fresh here as well. Um, so yeah, everything is really clean. Let's look around the front here and we'll see some of the uh, oil galley plugs that were drilled by George. So those are here. Now, coming out of the factory, they're just plugs. Uh, they're not threaded uh, and they can pop out. So when you're doing casework, always a good idea to get the uh, oil galley plugs drilled out so that you can put bolts or caps in them much safer. And you can see that uh, he did a really good job. Beautifully tapped. There's nothing like a good machine shop. Really nice. There's also some uh, galley plugs back here. You can see. You can always tell where the fresh ones are. <laughs> Obviously, there's still a lot of um, styrofoam and I'm sure some metal shavings and everything else that I want to make sure I get out of here. But I wanted to put this on the stand just to get a sense of how different this case is right now. And to give you guys 
a sense of what a completely bare case looks like. Once again, the nice thing about this yoke is you can kind of spin the engine. I'm just going to put a stop in here so that the yoke stays put. Um, now I'll take the left side of the engine off so that I can see what's inside there. And that sometimes requires a little coaxing. Okay, so I'm wondering why the case app isn't coming off. And lo and behold, uh, uh, there's a nut that George, I'm sure, wisely put on there to keep the case from coming apart in transit. But it also kept the case from coming apart here on my stand. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> I suspect it'll be a little easier this time. Amazing what a nut can do, huh? Now I mentioned before that the case needed to be a line board. So what's an align bore? It's a way of making sure that all of these journals are back to round and factory spec. And what basically happens is there's kind of like a roto rooter that comes in here and scrapes away enough metal, just enough, to bring things back to what it should be from the factory. But here's the thing, whatever you take off, you actually have to put back because the crankshaft has to sit in exactly the same spot as it did before. And the way you do that is by changing up the size of the bearing, all right? So like in my car, the crank has been worked on before, so you'll see that it'll say like 25 under, because um, that's you know where the crank is. But since the case has now been worked on also, there's another number which reflects the amount of additional bearing material that needs to be added here. So I think in this case, George told me that he took 10 off. So this bearing would be uh, 10 under for the case and 25 under for the crank. And of course, all of the bearings are going to have to have the same offset for everything to line up properly. Now a few other things of note here. Um, if you look really closely, you can see that some previous owner used a screwdriver to try to wedge the case halves apart. Now, I'll be able to seal around that, but just shows how soft the metal is and why you should never ever use a screwdriver to pry the case apart. Some other little nicks and stuff as you go around the edge here. I'm gonna clean all of this up, of course, as we progress with this build. Here is obviously where the camshaft is going to go. And the camshaft gear will sit in there. And uh, our crank will be right in here. Now here's the crank, and uh, it's in pretty good shape. I don't feel any ridges with my fingernail. Uh, I'm gonna send it out to the machinist to have it balanced with all the other rotating parts, just because uh, it's a good idea. I mean, it's probably pretty close for a street engine anyway, but um, the more you can get these things balanced, the longer they last and the more power you get out of them. Okay, lots of toys for engine building and the star of the show has to be this. Two liter heads from Len Hoffman at Ham. Just a work of art. And I opted for the coating, as you can see, um, on the fins, which supposedly dissipates heat. And there's also a coating uh, also in the chambers. So these truly are amazing. And in a future episode, uh, I'll be talking with Len about these heads and how he constructs them. What's his approach? So keep an eye out for that episode. And moving on, these are chromoly push rods here. These are trim to fit. I've got the tips in this little package here. So I will be uh, doing a valve geometry video so that we can get the lengths exactly right. This is an adjustable push rod, but um, I'll probably end up making one from the chromoly set up here because I'm not really happy with the match between these tips and these and you really want to make sure they're precise. Over here this is the new camshaft. This is a 9590 cam that uh, Jake Raby engineered and web cam grinds and you can see that the gear is not attached to it 
that's because it comes separately it's right here and this gear has been optimized for 914 type 4 engines in that the uh, bolt area has been recessed so that the bolts don't actually hit the oil pump which can be a problem with uh, non-stock cams in this box here what do we have pistons these are KB pistons uh, and they're just beautifully engineered as well um, really light solid uh, can't wait to put those in and the cylinders for those are, uh, are right here it's got an interesting netting on it kind of like those candles they put on a table in a you know, like a tiki bar restaurant <laughs> um, but it does a good job at protecting the, the cylinder. So I'm really fired up about this build and I can't wait to take this journey with you. I'll be videotaping episodes every step along the way as we go. I want to give a huge shout out before I forget to Jake Raby who is the undisputed king of Type 4 engines. Just an amazing builder and he came out with a DVD that shows how to dismantle and then build up a Type 4 engine. There is no way that I would attempt this project without that DVD and if you're going to do it I strongly recommend that you pick it up too. If you haven't subscribed please do it's a great way to stay in touch with everything I'm doing here and it also shows me that you're digging what I'm doing so hit the subscribe button thanks a lot be safe and enjoy.